Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate uh, the percentage overlap uh, of one data set on top of another. So what we have here is the Korean, uh, Korean um, uh, land use, land classification data, the EU data. That's from this website here, the Copernicus.eu uh, website. It's the land cover stuff. Uh, there's lots there, there's change data and everything, it's, it's pretty good really um, and uh, lots of interesting stuff uh, to use in GIS of course. Uh, so I've taken one of those data sets and you'll see here what I've done is I've, I've clipped it to Sicily. You can see Sicily there at the end. Um, now what I have done as well actually is I've filtered this data to just uh, look at this code 311. Now 311 um, is broad leafed, uh, leaved forest. You see that code there 311. So that, that's the only one we're actually looking at. See so if I just switch that on the whole lot disappears. I'm not looking at, a, at um, any, any other data it's just 311. And, and also that is vector data. So if I right hand mouse click on this Sicily uh, land use data I get as expected an attribute table is 488 records and it's got this uh, code 18 with that that's the um, 311 code for, for broadleaf um, data um, because it's only that single land um, cover type that I'm interested in and and there's a unique ID for each one so if I click on this one and just zoom to it that record there is just that object there, that, that feature. The point being is when, when you do things like this in the database, uh, work out sort of overlap percentage and that sort of thing, you, you, as with all these things, you've got to know your data, know, know your data. Um, that's, that's, uh, otherwise you'll, you'll soon find yourself lost. So you can see what this data looks like. Um, if I, let me just deselect that. So this is, these, these are vectors, um, this is all vector data and actually in this uh, Sicily land use table that's actually already in Postgres uh, and if um, again if I uh, right and click and go to properties go to source um, sorry information you can see how I've got uh, a post Postgres connection here uh, just to uh, local test um, on the usual port um, SRID and that sort of thing um, throw it five seven okay so again you, you, you've got to know that the data that you're looking at is in the same projection so that's the Sicily um, land use data uh, these are the postcodes so you see these black outlines they're the postcodes they're called caps and again they're also in um, three eight five seven so they're in the same projection so um, uh, which is a good thing. Um, you're going to run into issues with a different projection. So how did I get that that data in? I've actually I made a, a another video, a previous video about loading data into Postgres. So um, there'll be a link in there um, in the description for how to load data into Postgres, uh, Postgres, uh, PostGIS. So just just follow those instructions. I'm not I'm not showing the loading in in this instance. So let, let's let's just again just just to clarify. Look at the data. You can see how in some of these uh, postcodes, these features, there's only a very small percentage of these actual uh, broad leafed um, uh, leafed forest. Um, and I've kind of just randomly selected that. That's all. So my question is, what percentage of the postcode is covered by these green blobs? By this green leafed um, forest what, 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 what percentage okay so this can be executed of course in um, uh, I'm only I'm only using QGIS here as my, my visualization tool but um, it, this can be accomplished by tools in map info with cookie cutting and disaggregating the data in ArcGIS and the toolbox stick a few tools together in the model builder um, and in QGIS you can do the same sort of thing. So th this can be done through the interface, uh, through a few steps, creating a column, updating it, multiplied by um, 0. point whatever, and, um, and, and all that sort of thing. So 
you, you can do it. But what, what we, we want to do is actually do it in the database. So let's go straight into the database. So here we are in Postgres um, 13. Uh, and I, like I said, I've already loaded as land use Sicily and the Sicily uh, Postgres caps, they're called. And if we um, uh, just do a quick count of land use Sicily, so that's the count of the land use data, that's 488. Yep, that's what we've got in our geography. And, and in fact, let's just list them. So we can see they're all 311, that's correct, because I, I already filtered the data when I loaded it. I was only interested in that code. So, but I've got all the unique identifiers there, that, that's, that's good. So, okay, so, so how, how do we do this overlap calculation? So here, here it is, this is where the magic happens. So this is, so instead of doing a load of tools in the toolbox um, in ArcGIS or, or multiple buttons and adding fields and stuff in Map Info and QGIS, um, I'm gonna do it all in one in um, this single um, uh, SQL. So I'm gonna find out for, let's just list the um, uh, post codes, select. Let's just run that, list all the post codes, should just do F5. So these are the post codes that are loaded. There's the geometry column there, geom. Um, so there, so these these postcodes, these caps in Sicily are sort of start 08 and 2011 or what have you. Um, <clears throat> and uh, there's a hectares um, calculation there as well. But the point is that you can see the cap, the postcode name there, and it's got this primary key there, which was just added when I did the import. So we've got all the pieces of the puzzle. So how do we string them together? So I want to end up at the end of the day with the uh, postcode. Okay. I one of these values and then a comma basically sorry and then the next column is my calculation of the percentage um, overlap literally you, you can see I'm, I'm using as column name percentage overlap so I'm actually calling that column name percentage overlap so what what is this column name so what, what, what it's doing here is using ST intersection. So ST intersection, a very useful tool because that actually gives you the geometry of the intersection. You imagine a Venn diagram, you've got the intersection between two circles, that returns the geometry itself. And that's what we need. We need to know about how much geometry is, is um, in the overlap. So um, is in the intersection. So, um, uh, so I use ST area here to calculate the, uh, the well, exactly as it sounds, the, the total area. Uh, and intersection is taking A and B JOM here. So A and B JOM, because the field's called JOM in all my tables. Um, a, well, um, if you look here in the from SQL clause, we've got land use Sicily A and Sicily codes, i.e. the postcodes, B. So the, the um, alias there is A and B. So I'm saying bring back the um, uh, area of the uh, intersection between A and B, as uses uh, land use Sicily and Sicily codes, uh, geometry. Um, but I want you to sum it all up and divide it by the area of the um, whole of B geom, i.e. the whole of the postcode. So that, that, that's where the percentage is coming from you know I'm dividing it by the 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 big number then multiplying by 100 i.e get a percentage but when I do all of that I actually stick a two char at the front of it because I want to format it and put a percentage um, text character in the format in the in the answer I mean that I'm, I'm just doing that just just so it looks all right but you, you, you know you probably wouldn't necessarily bring that um, percentage back but I'm, I'm doing it just so you can see um, but this is all all dependent on a condition, and that is the condition of where B is overlapping A, where there's an overlap. So if the overlap exists, then grab intersections and do your percentage calculations. But you have to group by the um, uh, the, the, the postcode um, and the geometry itself. Um, as we are doing, if you're doing a sum, of course, you, 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 and, and whatever plays a part in that, that aggregate has got to be um, in the group by statement. But the point being that you, you, there could be multiple points of 
um, overlap. So, and then once that's all done, just order by percentage overlap. So let's just run it and you'll see what I mean. So five. So here we go. And, and so what we're saying here is these postcodes have this amount of overlap and I've got that percentage um, value in there, that percentage character. Um, yeah, it may look a bit odd actually. But anyway, uh, it shows you what you can do. So, okay, let's, 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 um, um, let's, let's do this. Let's change that slightly and say descending. Let's have the highest first. Okay. Okay, so 08, 08, uh, 3011 is 66.5%. Okay, that's a lot of coverage. It's going to be a lot of green in that one. So let's just, um, we could find it or, or whatever, or, um, um, oh, that's the land use one. Let me go to the postcode one. Open the attribute. So if we, um, we can literally just scroll down actually, because there's, there's not many in here. So, um, and what is it? There it is, I found it. So 083011. Um, and if you have a look in here, 083011. 011 66 and a half percent so that's a big so this wherever we zoom to now to be quite honest has got to be pretty well covered in green there's certainly a big slab of it anyway so let's zoom yeah that looks good it's just that looks good so we're saying that one there that we've centered on yeah i'll just uh this one 083011 you see that so it's highlighted that postcode and look at all that green in there and my SQL calculation has said that actually that 66.5% of this postcode is covered with the green. So we've got a, a good answer there. But but what what about um, uh, well what about where there was none? Yeah, um, let's choose one. So I'm really just testing my query here. That's all I'm doing. So um, let's uh, do an F5. So there we go. 084. 031. So let's go back here. Let's bring up the. Um, oh, I closed the attribute window. Let's bring it up again. So, what was it again? It was um, 084 031. So, this should be pretty much um, uh, blank. Well, it is blank. It's got to be. So, 084031. Here we go, that one. Zoom. There you go. There we go, that's it. 084031. You see, not a single green splodge in sight. So that's good. So I would say my SQL, certainly in an in the eyeball test, shall we say, um, looks right. That 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 all looks good to me. So um, so, so there we go. That's that's your um, SQL statement. But let's just let's just take this just a little bit further, because what I what I'd like to do is kind of share this um, data with uh, a um, Excel user. I, I want to share it. I want an Excel user to be able to pull back these two columns. Um, let's say um, descend, descending these two columns in, uh, into Excel. Uh, very easily so but of course the, the best thing here to do is to create a view so in so all I've done here is I've copied all this and then I've created a view called Broadleaves Forest you see it's in SQL so I copied and pasted it so if we just go to properties and code so there it is so I've just created a view and it's the um, same code basically and it's all pasted in there so why did i do that well it's to make the sql connection from excel just completely straightforward and also of course it will be updated whenever the gis data is updated so if we select start from broad please i could have just dragged it in there actually and there we have it so we've got this um result here and that's what I want to bring in Excel so let's go to Excel and I want this view which is a spatial view it's actually I'm um, sorry a spatial uh, analytically it's it's from a geospatial um, process and I want these these two columns in here 
So the way you do that is now I've already installed the ODBC Postgres drivers. So you need to make sure you've got those in there. So you go to data from, I mean, the, the database has, has obviously supports SQL Server and Microsoft Access, but for Postgres, you go from other sources, ODBC, because it's an ODBC source. Now I've already created a, um, a source to Postgres, there it is. So I've already created this DSN. Um, um, this is an ODBC connection, you, you, you feel free to look up um, all about that, but you'll need the ODBC DSN connection there. So that goes to the database and it goes straight in, you see. So now I'll just click and find my view. See my views there? There we go, that looks good. And then let's transform the data. So I, I don't want to just load this, I want to transform because I want to do a bit with this. There's so much there and there's loads of zeros and 1% and stuff. Oh, not really fussed about that. There's too many records. So I, so I hit transform. So there, there's the data. So let's um, let's let's do a, a now what, what I'm going to do here. You could do in the SQL in the back end, and to be quite honest, that's that's probably the best place to, to do it. But I'm, I'm doing it here just to show you what you can do. That's all. So I'm not interested in anything that um, uh, starts with this zero zero percent, so point zero zero percent or what have you. So I'm going to um, click on this and put a text filter in and say does not begin with uh, and I'm going to say 0.00% press OK see what happens now so now there's got to be some overlap of some description I mean you, you might leave it the zeros in and stuff because you still want people to say well I want to know about those areas that aren't covered by vines or by vineyards or, or this forest type or these crops I want to know about those because I want to move into those areas and see if there's opportunity that that sort of thing that sort of idea but I'm just showing you how let's get rid of the zeros there's got to be something and then what, what you could do is on the filter Let's um, sort descending. So you see how it's read it. So now we've got our sort of, um, it's it's descending in value. So we still got 3011 there with 66.5. Uh, but how about we, um, uh, let's say we do one last thing um, and just keep the, um, a certain number of rows. Let's just keep the top 10. So we keep rows, you see this button up here, keep rows. Let's keep top rows. And it prompts you, well, how many rows do you want to keep? Let's just keep 10, press OK. And now we've got the top 10 coverage by that um, um, land use, by that land cover, sorry, by that land cover, the broadleaf uh, broad forest, um, the code 311 from the current EU data. Now we've got the top 10. And that's and and we can now put that into our Excel worksheet. So in the view, of course, we had all the data, all the zeros and everything. But in here, we can still transform it and work it as as we wish. So now let's just close and load. And there you can see in Excel is some um, postcode and percentage overlap of of that um, data, and it's the top ten. And, the, and of course, the great thing about this, the powerful thing about this is in the back in the database, if anything changes, if there's an update to uh, the postcodes, to the postcodes or to the land use data, if there's an update to those, then this data is automatically refreshed whenever you reload the worksheet or you can or you can you can sort of force it as well manually. Um, but I'm not going to go too much into um, uh, Excel etc um, but uh, anyway uh, look, I, hope, I hope you find that useful so there's quite a lot covered there really but um, but really the main point of this video was was to show you the power of SQL um, and then um, to b build on that further to, to actually get the data into Excel to a non GIS client because this data we've ended up with is non spatial it is non geographic non-geographic it's it's textual so and that was that was my point to to bring that back as a view so and i've done it in postgres i could easily do it in sql server or oracle we can do it in any of those and um 
and but because I did it in Postgres, then it was obviously in Excel. It was saying it's a it's um, it's another data source, and and that is um, uh, a sort of shame, I suppose. But Microsoft obviously they're just pushing their products there. You see, if you see what I mean. So Postgres is another source, and it's an ODBC ODBC source, and that's what you got to remember to put that. Um, put the ODBC driver in there so I th I think that's um, uh, that's all yep that's all I was um, going to cover and um, and there we are an Excel user accessing the results of a geospatial query intersection overlaps I hope you find that useful thanks